Hey, happy Sunday, everybody. Um, if you don't know me, my name is Warren. I just wanted to welcome you to the gathering place here at Christie's. We're just really thankful that you're with us today. At the gathering place, we really contemplate life issues and try and come around them to discover what worldview we may have and how we can value one another, uh, hear each other, how we react to various life issues, and uh, try and come at them from certainly a faith perspective and, and see how that could help us through these things. Today's topic is why does God allow pain and suffering? And uh, we wanted to lead off with just a short video, kind of just a primer. So, Yeah. All right, so while we wait for this, um, we're going to be talking about in this world there's pain and suffering. Uh, maybe you have experienced pain, uh, long suffering. Maybe you, someone close to you has. And we think of this world as a place where we can live and enjoy life. And we wonder sometimes why these things come about upon us. And uh, at times it can be a very long road to tow watching someone go through pain and suffering. And so as we look at our worldview um, and wonder, you know, will medicine get us through uh, these times of pain and suffering? Certainly we've made some great advances, but yet there's no promises. And it really begins to make us look a little farther out, like what happens if um, I don't get through this? And 
as we think about God and contemplate him, maybe we wonder, where, where is he at? And why does he allow this? If, if God is real and he's a good God, why does he allow us to suffer and go through pain? What good could come out of that? Um, if God loves all people, why would he allow it? And so that's hopefully what this little pulse of the world video will show us. So it looks like we're getting there. Slowly. Slowly. So maybe, here we go. Pain, pain's a part of life. It's, it leaves a sour taste in half. It's, you just have to learn from it. I think some people believe it's a test of your faith, but if you don't have a faith to believe in, it kind of makes you wonder why Why is there suffering in this world? Famine and death. There's a reason why he took them. Uh, maybe he needed his name or something like that. To help him in the fight against the devil. A baby is a beautiful, wonderful thing. Why doesn't he want me to have this? I think that bad things are just the way that you see them. And God's and everything will do. I don't think God does these things to people. I think he has a way of getting us through it. Why would anybody want to create people who do horrible things to each other each and every day? It doesn't make any sense. People suffer because sometimes they put themselves into it, and others just, it just happens to them. When my grandma died, she died of cancer like six years ago, and I remember like when she was, like a few days before she passed away, she was like, it couldn't possibly be a god, no one would ever want it, no one would ever want to inflict this pain. Some of the best lessons I've learned in life and the best um, feelings in my heart came from very painful times. I don't think God's sitting there and saying these people are hurting and maybe I should help them or, or I'm going to pray to this you know, being and he's going to save me. I don't think that happens. Um, I think he's just there, I guess. <laughs> I'm constantly struggling, I suppose I'll be brutally honest, with uh, suicidal ideation and I find it very miserable often, despite the beauty of the world, to be made conscious in this form. Why? Why why, is the why, is, why are your little kids shot the other day? I want to know why this happened, but he's showing me that he's here with me, so I suppose the answers will come. It's just. I'm going through a journey right now that's painful. Oh, this. I wonder if I'll ever find my way. I wonder if my life could really change. And all of this earth could all that is lost ever be.
That was awesome. Thank you so much, praise team. I was wondering, that song starts out with all this pain. There's so much pain in the world. And, but yet the song ends with, you make beautiful things. You make me new. And has anybody ever gone through that transition where you've gone through extreme pain? And, and you wonder if there's ever a way that you can get out of it. But through some circumstance, you found something new. You became a new person through that process. I know okay. online during the song, somebody commented just saying cancer is a painful journey. Cancer is a painful journey, yes. I mean, we can't even put words to describe the pain that people go through in, in cancer. And it plays no favorites, that's for sure. Any thoughts about having gone through a painful process that maybe you came out new on the other side? Yeah, Dana. Um, I have a neurological condition that they told me um, for a while that I didn't walk. So for a year, I was unable to walk. So I had to learn how to walk again and do that experience at some point. But how am I going to live with this? How am I going to live with this? But during that time, I became stronger with God and actually realized there was one. You know what I mean? So through this so, process through that, of yeah. like. And not I am walking, which is a miracle in itself. But, you know, and that's because I was walking through God, with God. I remember seeing you at the Jewel one day, and you had this big boot, and, yeah. and Dana's really a positive person, and I said, Hi, what'd you do? And, and she was really trying her best to put a positive spin on what was going on with her foot, but you could tell this was heavy, and she did, you didn't know that what the future was going to hold. You, you were, she was scared, and so it was through that process you discovered God. Uh, how, how did you, what did you discover about him? Each day got better for whatever reason. They kept saying, it's not, you know, you're never going to run again. You're never going to do this again. And I was like, I don't, I'm not going to never run any of this. You know what I mean? Did tons of prayer. And it got me closer with the kids with God, too. And, you know, every night we would just be like, and my kids were praying, please, God, let her run yeah. again. Like, this, this has got to happen, you know? Right. And God would let me to the right doctors. God would, you know what I mean? So that was so helpful. That's awesome. Always hearing never. You'll never, you'll never, you'll never. That just is a crushing thing. And, and to even begin to contemplate never being able to run again. I mean, you're pretty athletic. I know you like to run. And never being able to run after your kids again. And, and trying to push through that and finding some ground uh, that will give you hope. And it sounds like God, through your children and through doctor visits, was able to surround you with people who could give you that hope and Look at you now today. It's awesome. You're healed. Praise God for that. Yeah. That's the kind of thing we're talking about. And that's why we sing. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah. Donald. Another online one was a job change. Job changes. Yeah. Job changes. You lose your job. Maybe you're so loyal to a company and all of a sudden you're expendable and you're gone. And you try and find identity. We talked about that a couple of weeks ago. But yet... If you're blessed with a new job, you might discover something new about yourself or a talent, an undiscovered talent. So, yeah, you, you kind of go right into the crucible of the pain and the suffering and wondering. So I just wanted to talk a little bit about that song. You know, we sing words, and I wanted just to try and connect those words with life, you know. And uh, our, our main video on this topic um, will take us a little deeper into that. So let me get that switched up for you. Am I doing it, Donald? Yes, it's all you. All right. <laughs> all right. It's, we got the little spinning thing. You'll learn soon enough. I will. Is this the right video? Because this is 2 minutes and 38 seconds. That's not the right video. <laughs> <laughs> good, thing good thing I'm here to keep you on it track. It says 8 minutes, man. He's got your back. You need a Siri voice for those clarifications. No. This has severe okay, right since he was born. For 15 years, he okay, had 10 to 20 epileptic seizures every day. And uh, our whole life was basically revolved around 
his disability, and yet I would pray for other friends who had sick children, and it seemed like their kids got better, um, but my son didn't. The one moment that redefined this question for me was probably in 2004 with the tsunami that happened in Asia. And just the sheer devastation of a natural disaster just brought me to my knees. And where I was at the television saying, God, seriously, why? The question, how can God allow these bad things to happen, I think is a, it's a reality. It's a hard, hard question. In fact, maybe the hardest question. God allows humankind to make their own. <laughs> the magnificent things. I mean, you have a look at the extraordinary things, extraordinary <laughs> things that human beings have been able to accomplish uh, in the freedom and autonomy that God has given us. But the downside or the dark side of this autonomy or this freedom is that we can just create the most vile and contemptible and cruel and vicious outcomes of being human. A lot of what we see in the world, in my opinion, of what I've experienced is, you know, you have generations of men, you know, women, father, mother, children, when they make the choice not to love, love God, love each other, you play that out and um, there, there's a lot of pain that comes up. The suffering that comes from nature or earthquakes or hurricanes or mm -hmm. things like that, I, I find it harder to explain. And uh, I guess you've got to live with the mystery of it. Um, Uh, when you go out east into the eastern religions, it doesn't suck it up. It doesn't make any. It doesn't attempt to try and make sense of it or derive meaning. So the Buddhist answer, for instance, and I have great respect for Buddhism, the Buddhist answer says it's not real. Uh, suffering has no reality. Well, you know, I, I think you tell that to a suffering person, and I don't think it makes sense to them. The Christian answer actually doesn't answer everything. Uh, particularly when you're suffering, um, but it is the best one around, uh, without a doubt. About five years ago, I was pregnant, and I heard the words that no mother ever wants to hear, your child is not going to live. Um, on April 7th, 2008, I delivered a little girl who was alive when she was born. Her name was Audrey Caroline, and she lived for two and a half hours. short amount of time, watched her get her first bath and a little haircut. But later that night when everyone was gone and it was just my husband and I alone with her, as time went on, we knew that we were gonna have to call a nurse to come in and take her. I had to hand my daughter to someone and watch her be taken away from me, knowing that I wouldn't see her again this side of heaven. And as I lay in that hospital bed and everything in me wanted to just bang on all the buttons and tell them <coughs> to bring her back. I really called out to God in a way I never had before. And I just said, I can't do this. And I need you to just be here right now. I just need you to hold me. I did. I did. I will tell you that in that moment I saw um, a side of God that I've never experienced and have never forgotten since then. Just his faithfulness to one girl in a hospital room who was devastated. And I just really felt that he was there. talk to people about the stuff they've gone through. I, 
to be honest, the, for me, the best answer and the, the most appropriate response as, as a Christian, as a believer, is to cry too. To hold the hand and to weep too. And then to introduce them to someone who helps pull you out of the pit. And not in some weird, messed up, quick fix kind of a way. I get really annoyed <laughs> when we Christians propose that as an answer, as like the quick in a box fix that changes everything. Um, but there's a there's a phrase it's in one of the books of the bible which talks about I, uh, and it's this it says i know my redeemer lives and um and that part of the bible has always won me because it talks about this person who buys back all that's been lost um through your own helplessness um through violence through your own foolishness and um that's who i met <laughs> someone who who helped me over over years and blood sweat and tears um, bring back that one, what was lost. We have seen God use our son's sickness um, in amazing ways, and people have found faith in Jesus through his life. And I guess maybe God does uh, use some people and their disabilities and their struggles to help other people to find God. You know, I, I do think like if there really is a heaven and if what is said about heaven from the words of Jesus is true and that there, my son will never be sick again and someday I'll see him as this perfect body in this perfect form and then Ryan looks at his life and we all see the amount of people that have been influenced by his life. Am I going to argue with what God did? Probably not. I'll probably be thankful that he allowed our family to. Um, I guess, to, to struggle through, um, and yet, why does he just help other people? I don't know, but I'm glad he does. I'm glad he just helps. I'm glad that no matter what we see, apparently God has some plan for that. We see that God actually comes to the planet. He actually lives among us so that he understands our suffering, our hurt, our pain. He understands it all. Then Jesus dies on the cross, and in the mystery of faith, all the junk of the world, all the junk that's in our hearts, all the junk that's in our relationships, all of that junk dies with him. So, in the Christian worldview, God doesn't leave our world in the state that it is, but actually is seeking to heal it, to bring us back. We feel as though we're in this battle, and um, really what we need in the midst of that battle is a hero to step in for us. And the hero, obviously, is, is God. I believe that God considers those who struggle with him to be heroes also. In fact, I, I would go so far as to say that those of his children who struggle against all of these terrible things that we see in the world um, are cheered on by the population of heaven and um, if they should die in their struggle I believe they can okay we're gonna have some uh, discussion questions for you guys uh, and we'd like you to uh, find someone nearby to talk about some of these questions. And um, actually, we're going to try something new this week because we have been receiving such a great response online. Our Facebook Live audience is tuning in. And we thought, Facebook friends, that we'd make you one of our discussion groups. So Pastor Donald's going to lead that with you. Uh, so make some comments, uh, and he'll be kind of speaking to you. If there's anyone here in the room that wants to join Pastor Donald, you know, probably one or two others that could get around the computer. Uh, we'll take that discussion with our Facebook Live. But um, the questions we have today are uh, up on the on the TV here. On a scale of one to ten, how difficult is it for you to reconcile the existence of both suffering and God? And one of the speakers noted that some of the best lessons come from very painful times. How is it? How is that good or bad? And do you have any experience with this? And then finally, in the video, someone said, "What do you think of?" Uh, it asked, "What do you think of James's suggestion that God 
understands our suffering and is seeking to heal it. So uh, take some time, uh, turn around, find somebody to talk to, and work through these questions. We'll spend like five minutes on five, ten minutes or so. So ready, break. Hey, everybody. It's Pastor Seth. I'm just taking over here on the live feed. And I'm going to put them in the comment section, the three questions that were up on the screen. If you couldn't see them here when Pastor was sharing them. Let me put them up real quick. Once again, the three questions. One was on a scale of one to ten, how difficult is it for you to reconcile the existence of both suffering and God? Another one is. And one speaker noted, some of the best lessons come from a very painful time. How is that good or bad? Do you have any experience with this? And finally, in this video, what did you think of James' suggestion that God understands our, our suffering and is speaking in a heal? So here we got Dave with us. So Dave, do you have any thoughts on any of these three questions? Like the first one, on a scale of one to ten, how difficult is it for you to reconcile the existence of both suffering and God? Well, I guess for just to share just a little bit, I'm a, I guess I'm a fairly mature Christian. I came to God when I was like 26 years old. Uh, up until that time, I had been agnostic or an atheist, whatever you'd like to call it. Um, but then as I started learning and studying God, I really had to work through all of that. I'm kind of a lot a scientific person, so I, I, I did a lot of thought and work a lot of working through to get to that. Uh, so at this point in time, to answer the question, I, I've, I think I've reconciled this this issue fairly well, at least within my own mind. Um, it basically goes along the line that God is always using everything that we experience to make us who we are. We're basically the sum total of our experiences. And so... I, I can't help but believe that he is always using these things to prepare us for the future and for the opportunities that we'll have to to uh, cope with life ourselves and also to share our belief in Jesus as our Savior with others as God chooses to cross their path our cross our paths together. And I think um, so Lord, kind of it. I think Lori brought up a good point here where she said. Sometimes healing may not be physical, but in the heart. I think that's an important thing to understand that a lot of times you think, oh, I need to be healed of whatever our ailment is. But sometimes it's that healing of that heart and finding comfort and peace and knowing that God is in control and God has a plan. Do you have any thoughts on that statement? Uh, yeah, for sure. Um, I, I think, you know, probably the obvious and best example of God using terrible things for good is, of course, the death of his own son on the cross. And, and of course, through that is what is our basis of salvation and, and so if he can if he can give up his own son and, and, and then you read through the bible and you see the love that he shares for us and that he promises that he'll never love he'll never leave us nor forsake us uh, and, and, uh, so that uh, that means a lot to me um, the other thing that is perhaps interesting that maybe not everyone has thought of is that if you were to compare all of our suffering and horrible things that happen here on earth, and not to minimize that by any stretch of the imagination because it's truly horrible and really devastating, but yet if you compare that, it's really nothing more than the blink of an eye compared to the all eternity in time that will be in heaven and where there'll be no pain, no sorrow, no sadness. We'll we're we'll at his banquet table every day and we'll be in his presence and we'll sing praise. And, and so uh, it's it's just that you know God is waiting for us to bring as many people with us as we can by sharing our stories and telling telling everyone that we get the chance to uh, that 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 He's our Savior, and, and that we're there. Yeah, and really, you know, God, has, God has no sense of time. Time is meaningless to God, so it's interesting that he's really waiting.
waiting for us here on earth in our sense of time to do these things and to bring as many people with us as we can. And I guess I'm talking too much. No, and I think it's one of those things too, in the midst of our suffering, we kind of have blinders on where that's all we can see. We don't see the kind of become the big picture that we have that whole eternal life. Yeah. But it's all I can focus on is what's right ahead of me is that trouble in time in my life. And so kind of you're thinking about God and suffering a little bit and Pastor Tom said it kind of saying, does God feel our suffering? I think he does, and I think you know, the suffering he had to feel when he saw Jesus there dying on the cross. I mean, I think even Christ, he felt that ultimate uh, ultimate pain and suffering when he, to me, experienced hell on earth, when he experienced that God had forsaken him. He said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? To me, he was experiencing life without God at that point. So he knows what it feels like to suffer and be in intense agony, even in the garden of Gethsemane when he was sweating blood that shows the amount of extreme pressure and stress that he was under that the I can't think of the official term of like when you the blood vessels burst and you sweat blood instead of typical some of the best lessons you kind of speak of. Just to share a little bit more about, you know, perhaps the most, uh, the biggest thing that's happened to me recently, you know, it's not that recent now, is that I, I did a couple rounds of a battle with cancers, two separate, two distinct separate ones. And uh, I can remember the first time when I went into the test, uh, God actually whispered to me that just for the record just so you know this isn't going to go well for you this is going to be bad news but but fear not because it's going to work out and so that was just absolutely flabbergasting and amazing to me you know sometimes when god you hear these things in your head you sit there and you wonder is this just me talking or is this really God talking. It's hard to distinguish that a lot of times. But this time, it was not. And so when I would tell people what happens and what's going on with me, and they would say, you know, don't worry, it's going to work out, or wonder, why aren't you all devastated by this? You know, it, it's like God is throwing open a window to share the story with people and, and to it just it was it was just a kind of an amazing experience and, and so now lots of times I've had the opportunity to kind of you know, just share and, and relate to people that are going through this diagnosis and, and to just let them know that you know God is there walking with them. I think that kind of fits to that one speaker who noted some of the best has come from a very painful time. Indeed. That you know I think that's what you're sharing there that that was not a good time as long as our said earlier, cancer is a painful journey, but you were able to learn that you can use as a witnessing tool. Isn't it, isn't it interesting, and this is painting a very broad brush, so forgive that, but isn't it interesting how some of the most faithful people in the world are the poorest, the most downtrodden people in the world? Perhaps not a coincidence. Right, I mean, I think they lean upon God in all circumstances. They know what it means to be leaning upon God for his comfort. Going back to that, you know, that healing might not be physical, but it could be in our heart. And it's like, where, you know what, this is God's plan, but we also know that God has plans for us to prosper and do those things, and not that it's going to, even though we're going to struggle, I mean, there's sometimes we hear about, oh, God wants to be happy, God's going to make everything work out. And it doesn't always go that way. But we got to come to understand that, you know, even in those times, God hasn't forsaken us. We're not like Christ on the cross. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? But we can go to God, trusting and seeking his mercy and his peace. And hopefully that understanding in the midst of our suffering. Right, Lord, I think that's kind of what Dave was saying upon us about their attitude as a witness. I like think all of us, no matter what we have, whatever difficulties we might have, because nobody's life is perfect. We all have our structures, our downtime, or whatever it may be. And it kind of goes in ebbs and flows. Sometimes it's a lot of struggles, other times things seem to go possibly. But no matter what, we can be a constant witness to God and what He has done that. But looking back, I think all of us can look at our life like, you know what? That was a bad time. That was a stressful time. I didn't quite like that. 
but I saw how God worked through that situation. And I think that can help us grow in our faith as well. When we look to see, you know what, this is how God has been there in the past. I know he won't leave me because he got me through this. He's going to get me through this. It might not be the outcome that I want, but he's still the one in control. As Dave pointed out earlier, we still have that comfort, that promise of eternal life and heaven where there will be no more pain and suffering. Does anybody else have any thoughts or comments about these questions? Like, again, the questions, if you haven't seen them, are on a scale of 1 to 10, how difficult is it for you to reconcile the existence of those suffering and God? And one of the spoker, speakers who noticed some of the best lessons come from very painful times. How is that good or bad? Do you have any experience with this? And the last one was, in the video, what did you think of James's suggestion that God understands our suffering and is seeking to heal it? Yeah, going back to that last question there that understands our suffering. I think that is such an important thing to remind ourselves that you know, I think they hit upon in the video that you know, God became a personal God when he sent Christ into this world. He became flesh just like you and me. Christ had a human nature where he felt that pain and the suffering. We know the times he needed rest. There's times that he was hungry. He showed anger. He showed frustration when the Pharisees and all the people in the temple were make, changing all the money. He just turned all the tables over. So we know he was angry about things. But there was still a righteous anger. But he knows how it feels to go through all the emotions that we do. And I think that was one of the amazing things about God. Is that we don't have a God that's far away but is close to us. Wants that relationship for us and we know he wants a relationship by the fact that he was willing to send his own son to die for us it, it's, it's really pretty amazing when you really think about uh, how God is got a complete handle and control over all of the crazy interactions you know just because you you know, you just make one decision here, and somebody else make that decision there, and they interact with each other. And, but yet God, in his amazingness, knows how all of that interaction is going to work out in the end, and that it will, in fact, work out. Two-minute warning. We hopefully can wrap this up in a couple minutes. For the outcome to be. So basically, everything is exactly as it's supposed to be for the ultimate goal of our salvation. Right. And that's an interesting question somebody did just put. How can I know that God is really close to me? Because that can be a hard thing to struggle with. Because in the midst of those hard times, we might feel like God is so far away from us. So Dave, you kind of talked to that. Like, that's a really good question. It's a hard one. Uh, just my, for what it's worth, my, my steps on it uh, kind of go like, like, uh, like this. And the way... That I know when God is being close to me is I have to be quiet and I have to be still because it's my, I'm of the opinion that God never shouts, never seldom shouts. He's never boldly writing on the wall, I am God, you should be doing this. Because if he were to do that, he would take away our own free will that he's given us. He doesn't want us to worship him or know him because we're afraid of him. He wants us to uh, know him and have a relationship with him that's based on a reflection of the love that he's given us back to him. And so he whispers. And so that's the way he communicates to his people that know him is in whispers so that only the people that are really listening hear him. It's subtle usually. Another good way of knowing is when fellow Christians come up to you and say things that start going beyond a coincidence. I find that to be a pretty sure sign as well. And I think, kind of going to you, and I'll get to the couple of comments, but like, I think we read scripture and we see all the big signs that God did to reveal himself to the people, whether it's the burning bush, Caleb's talking donkey. Sometimes like we feel we want those things. Yeah. Like, 
That'd you be know, nice. If I did that, I would know that's a sign from God. But I really wonder if we would, or we might think, okay, this is maybe the devil, but God doesn't maybe do those things, but he works through the people he places in our lives. I think you kind of hit at the end that you know, those other Christians, they kind of support and encourage us. And that is God adding through those people because we're all called to be little Christ to one another. And to me, that is being there for people in their time of need. And Lori brought up during harder times, I grow because when everything is fine, maybe easier forget to thank God for what I have. And I think that's, we kind of talked about that, I know, last week in some of the small groups that when everything's going good, why do I need to thank God? Because things going the way I want. I did this all on my own. But we forget that it's God is the one who gave us those positive, those blessings in our life. And then also, Lord brought, you know, feeling really peace of God and know who's there. I think there's something that, as Christians, we all know what it feels like to feel that peace in God. I think that goes back to the whole aspect of being a witness to somebody and saying, you too can have this comfort or this peace. It's not supposed to be something hokey, but it's something we know, but sometimes it can be hard to explain. Yeah. It's, if, it's, it's also sort of interesting if you... Go back to Genesis, of course, when God created the world in Adam and Eve. Of course, there was no, there was no pain and all that. It was all introduced uh, by their, uh, you know, disobedience. And so here we are today, still living with it. All right, let's uh, come back to our discussion, and I'll try to bring some of this in our big group discussion with everybody. Good luck. I gotta tell you, it is so awesome. It's like music to my ears to hear you all talking and connecting is good stuff. So thank you for doing that. Um, I don't know about you, but our table had a really excellent conversation around these questions. Um, I can't wait to hear from, from all of you. So um, on a scale of one to 10, 10 being the hardest, obviously. How difficult it is for you to recognize or reconcile the existence of pain and suffering with God? Uh, who came up with a one? Oh, we got a couple of ones. Okay, yeah. One being easy. All right. Very good. Bob, why is it easy for you to reconcile pain and suffering with God? Well, uh, well what's, you can help me with the verse, but the verse about uh, our ways are not his and his ways are higher and his, you know. Yeah, our ways are not uh, his ways and our our thoughts are not his thoughts, declares the Lord. The is, like, so our, just, our knowledge is limited. Yeah, I don't know uh, anything but that we're created and if I can know that we're created, but I gotta trust that it's So you're holding on to like you're created, you're loved by God, so because he created you because he loves you. He understands. So that's what helps you trust and get that down to a one. That's really cool. That's great. Did anybody have 10 or high up on the scale? When our group was talking a little higher up on the scale. What makes it higher up on the scale? Harder to reconcile. This is a P word. Challenges. Challenges. When it gets personal, you know, like uh, one of our folks said, oh, you know, the shooting in Vegas was horrible. How could one person impact so many lives? Horrible. But yet, friends, we're so far removed from it. We're only close because of the connection on TV. But when it gets personal, me, uh, somebody in my family who I love dearly, now this is harder to reconcile. Like, God, why? The question is why, kind of, right? Any other thoughts on, on the reconciling? Well, I think we had one kind of, I don't know if it fits to this, but one online people say sometimes healing may not be physical, but it's in the heart. So an online uh, person said sometimes healing may not be physical, but it's in the heart. Right. So we may not get that physical healing, but, but something happens inside of our, the essence of who we are in our hearts. Uh, we talk about it gives us a new sense of or a renewed sense or unrealized sense of courage. Um, Lee, you were going to say uh, something. In, in the Bible, Jesus healed. Yeah, I read all the time that Jesus healed.
heals. I see how he does all this. Well, where's my thing? Where's my healing? Come on, Jesus. Yeah. Dave, you were going to interject? Challenge between the objective and the subjective is what Dave was saying. Uh, Facebook friends, like objectively, we know these things and we know they're going to happen because we see them. God tells us, but subjectively, the emotions really t tear away at us. So, yeah, really well said. Uh, let's move on to the next one. Uh, some of the best lessons come from very painful times. How is that good? And uh, do you have any experience with that? Anybody want to share anything about that area? Uh, have you learned lessons from pain and suffering? Yes. No. No. Yes, I, uh, what? What? Can, would you mind sharing it, some of those lessons? Okay. Yeah. The number one lesson is even though you're suffering, the power of prayer supersedes that. And that's what enforces your faith. Wow, wow. So when you're suffering, uh, what gets you through that is the power of prayer. And not only mine. Not only yours, but that of many. People who love me. Yeah. It gives you a boost and gives you encouragement. And is is something you really hung on to. I did. And yeah. When I was at that point, I didn't care if I would die. Yeah. I wanted to. Yeah, you, you were ready to. I was ready. Yeah. Now maybe the lesson is you learn how powerful prayer is yes. by, uh, you know, many. Yes. The power of many for one. Yeah, that's wonderful. That's a great lesson. Any others, lessons that people have learned with regard to pain and suffering? I know one of them. I kind of think we talked about one of the groups last week we talked about, but during harder times I grow because when everything is fine, it may be easier to forget to thank God for what I've done. And, and we kind of talked about that in our group a lot was the idea that even though we might have a down, like a bad thing happen, but it opens up the door for us to help be witnesses to what God has done. Yeah. So God will use us to be his witnesses. Right. When things are going great, you know, what are we, you know, things, things are fine. But when we're challenged to the core, it's an opportunity to witness, just as you did, Joan, and, and all of the sharing that you have uh, done individually. Yeah, excellent. Um, the yeah. only other lesson that I've learned is when you're challenged, you have to carry on. When you're challenged, you have to carry on. Right. That's a great lesson. Um, keep going. Keep Don't going. Stop. Don't stop. Yeah. We, As I said before, one of our friends in our group said uh, she knew that she, um, I can't remember the word, but it was almost like she had like this tenacity in her. And it was directed for other things in her life. But this keep going, keep moving on, was redirected toward her getting through this, this thing that was impacting her life. Excellent. Great lessons. Um, the last question, what do you think of James' suggestion that God understands our suffering and is seeking to heal it? Does he understand? Yeah. You say that with such certainty. He does. He does. Unquestionable. Unquestionable. Yeah, that's great. Uh, how do you know that without question? Because you've, you've made it through, right? He loves us. He loves us. All of us, yeah. How about the fact that his own son Jesus went through all this suffering, you know? Uh, where the writer of Hebrews says that, you know, God is sympathetic. Uh, he, he understands. He's been through the suffering that we've gone through. Um, so he's not a remote God or a remote higher power. He gets it. Even Father gets it because he gave up his son, his only one. So he gets it. And he turned away from his son for our sake. Um, is he seeking to heal us? Is he seeking to heal us? Uh, at 
in our group, I, there was a devotion I wrote a year or two ago that I kind of flagged and always go back to when myself or someone's going through a hard time. But it disputes the saying of God will never give you more than you can handle. Mm. And it kind of goes through to say he's constantly giving people more than they can handle. Yes. And, and he's doing it because he knows that you need to lean on him in order to have the strength to go through it. I'm so glad you bring that up because that is one of those phrases that is kind of, you know, uh, words put together and people say this is what the Bible says, and, and it really doesn't. God's word does say that he, when we are in the day of temptation, he will provide an escape. He will provide a way out. And I think that's where people kind of use that, like, well, God won't give me more than I can handle. It wouldn't be a challenge if he can give us more than we can handle, right? But and so it, it, he uses those, as we talked earlier, how he just musters up uh, something that he gives us inside of us to to meet the challenge in the only way that we know. And it doesn't mean that we're suddenly like um, heroic and, and, and we know that, oh, we'll get through it. No, it, there's a lot of scared feelings. So, yeah. Um, and I was I always lead by every time I wake up in the morning, just through you know, if my kids sick or I'm sick or anyone or anyone's going through pain or I read something like that. I always wake up and I like sit up by the bed. I always say, uh, I'm thankful for this day. You know what I mean? Like I wake yeah. up and I'm like, not that I made it through the day. You right. know what I mean? Not that I did the research. I'm just thankful for today. I'm just thankful for today. You know. And the grace is new every morning. Yeah. You, know, you got something new every morning, and so. God is faithful to me. That's great. Yeah. Um, yeah, he does seek to heal us, uh, but sometimes we aren't healed. I mean, maybe you know someone who hasn't been healed, and they've lost the fight. And so I wondered about that, you know. And you could answer that, well, we're healed eternally. Um, and that gets into all sorts of thoughts while well, I prayed for physical healing, why didn't it arrive? And um, those are things that shake us to the core. But if we have this perspective, uh, now we can go to the next slide. we got some, some of God's Word here to help us out. One of the speakers said, I really rely when I've kind of been, things have been taken away from me or I'm lost. Uh, she said, for I know that my Redeemer lives. And, and these are such great words of hope, and if you look at the beginning, it talks about things that are permanent, that won't go away, and so uh, the guy who said this, his name is Job, he says, oh, that my words were written, inscribed in a book, inscribed in a book, how? With an iron pen and lead engraved on a rock forever. That's, that's what he wants his word to say about what he's ready to tell you, so that it never change. It, it is so permanent. It is so absolute. And what you had said, you, you know that God loves you. And so he comes with his lead pen and he graves it in the rock and says, I know that my Redeemer lives even though I have lost. And he's saying this in the middle of losing his family, his possessions, his friends. Uh, his wife tells him to curse God and die. And he says, now here's what I hope for, that when when the day comes and I'm still the last will stand on the earth and I'm long gone, I when my skin is destroyed, I will see God. I shall. That's an imperative. I shall see God, whom I shall see for myself. My eyes shall behold not another. Oh, this makes my heart pump. You know, I can't wait for this. So that is the hope that comes out of pain and suffering. Let's go to the next slide, Don. Um, for I consider the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing the glory that is to be revealed to us. Now, that's a hard pill to swallow when you're in the middle of suffering. But there's a lot of truth to that. And anyone who's gone through suffering and pain can say that with certainty. Donald, you sound like you got your so, one, one of the people online was like, I'm reminded of Paul Frank that for the thorn to be removed and being told my grace is sufficient. Yeah, Jesus comes to us in our suffering and says, you're all I need, or I'm all, I'm all you need. My grace is sufficient for you. My power 
is made perfect in your weakness. It's it's the whole inverted mindset of what this world says. This world says, be strong, be powerful, press through, fight through. You can do it. It's within you. But when you're like, I got nothing in the tank, what do I do? God says, you got me. My grace is enough for you. That's great. Let's go to the next slide now. Um, not only that, but we rejoice in our sufferings. Why? <laughs> oh, wow. We rejoice in our sufferings. Well, why? What benefit does that have? Uh, it produces endurance uh, to, to run this race called life. And that endurance produces character. Um, so, yeah, all of this creates a, a greater you. And that character produces hope. You, you see right here in these words the transformation that maybe many of you talk about, how you dealt with the bad news of the, of the diagnosis or the pain or the suffering, and you processed through it and you came out with hope. And that hope you will never be put to shame. We talked about how one girl, a uh, young girl, was destined to leave this life and pass away. And uh, she did die, and she kept you know, encouraging her mom, it's okay, mom, it's okay. And now, after a time of mourning, this family says, it is okay. And I'm not put to shame because I know God helped us through this loss. Um, because God poured out his love for our hearts. And that's what Bob said earlier. He's like, I know God loves me, and he's pouring it out on me. And uh, he's giving us the Holy Spirit. So that's a great word to end on. Uh, Donald, you want to come and pray us out, and then we'll sing our next song? Great discussion, everybody. Thanks. Thank you. So this gentleman I talked about earlier about the power of prayer. And so this is a great time where we can go and talk God in prayer. So I'm going to ask for any prayer requests. Warren's going to look online and see if we have any through Facebook Live, and we'll add that. And I'll just write on my phone as we get the prayer request, and then we'll pray. So does anybody have any prayer requests? Behind you. Oh. Hi. Hi. Um, for Donald, yeah. um, a friend of ours named John, who's kind of been brought to the gates of death multiple times in the last eight years. A lot of Greg Lindman and Tuck ain't, so I don't know what's that saying. Said Karen, right? <laughs> Any other prayer requests? If not, let's go to our Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we just know. You are a loving and gracious God that even in the midst of our suffering, you are right there next to us, giving us that comfort, that strength. And believe Psalm 46 says, you are a refuge and our strong tower. And we need that in our life because, as we know, there's a lot of hurt and a lot of pain. And we just lift up to all those in our hearts and minds. And especially today, we think of Maria, whose brother passed away, and just all the stress that that deals with and all the other implications of being power of the power of the journey, the power of the attorney. I go, like, we just ask you to be with her, come her in this time of mourning, and that rosy scans come back good, that the cancer hopefully is not there, it's not as strong as it once was, and we pray for John, who's been struggling a lot lately, we just lift him up and ask you for 
peace and patience and strength during these times. And for Debbie's Aunt Carol, who is still recovering, and for Michelle, who's still mourning the loss of her husband, be that refuge at Strong Tower. And we just ask, you lift up Tim's sister Karen, who's going under and for surgery tomorrow. Let that be successful. Keep her safe and guide the hands of the doctors. And we praise all through your son, who's our savior. Amen. Amen. All right, praise team. Take us home.
for joining us and if you can't make it next week come and join us online again like you did today thank you and god bless